Hello there, welcome to yet another episode of The Digest. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Francesca. Now, Zambia's workforce, which is categorically young, operates in the informal sector, thereby not actively participating in the economic transformation of the country. The significant role played by small medium enterprises, SMEs, in stabilizing and revamping the economy cannot be ignored because one of the major contributors to the gross domestic product are operators in the informal sector, our youth. With the coming in of the New Dawn government making pro-agriculture pronouncements and the setting up of the new Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprises, the youth are optimistic about the agribusiness. This week on The Digest, a 37-year-old qualified lawyer is changing the odds as he toils to make agriculture as his main source of income, while the former becomes his part-time work. This is Samford Mwinde's Agripreneur's Tell. Samford Mwinde resides in Woodlands. He has been married to Idalungu Mwinde for five years and the couple is blessed with two children, a boy and a girl. He is a private practicing lawyer for one of the renowned private law firms in the country. His passion for keeping chickens was identified while he was a small boy growing up in the village. I was born in the village. <laughs> and as, as a villager, um, our parents had um, a deliberate habit of, um, of giving each one of us a chicken. Uh, so they would give you a, a baby chicken, not really very babyish, maybe a four months old chicken that you can, you can grow into maturity and then it will start laying eggs and then it will have chicks. So from the number of chicks that would be born, then uh, my mother would know that you have a good hand for, for chickens. So it is from that inspiration that when I was told I had a good hand, so I realized when I grew up, I would want to do this project at a larger scale. We were given the first bird at the age of four years. Yeah, unless at the age of four years you're able to, to play with the chicken and be able to, you're just told that your chicken has 21 eggs, it has hatched 18, and then by the, remember those days we used to start school when your hand reaches here, and so by the time my hand could reach here at the age of seven, at least had a number of chickens. So you sell those chickens and then you buy your uniform, you buy your books, you buy your shoes, and then you begin your school. So it is from that that I began, from the tender age, that I began getting an income from chickens. Of course, with the influence of, of our parents. And then for, for this current one, um, I started in 20, 2012. So in 2012, I kept a number of broilers, about 1,000 of them actually. But the challenge was um, the, 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 the feed stock comes in quickly for broilers. You have starter, you have grow, and you have finish. So the sequence of six weeks and the number of chickens needs you to have some good capital. Yeah, so I did that, raised a bit of money out of it. I got my first car from my chicken business, my broiler chicken business, era four, which I was proud of. Um, no, no, I, I sold it. But it's the one that took me to Ziali and um, Actually, you know, Ziali is, is, is at, a, it's at, it's at a place where you can't use a bus. So at least it was easy for me to access. Okay, so a thousand broilers, when sold, they were able to, to help me get myself my first car. Of course, it was a second-hand boat with them, uh, but mobile. And then also, at least uh, cushioned my expenses at Ziali. 
and also I managed to get this particular piece of land in 2012 where I'm doing this project. So this one is, um, is a one acre farm. One acre in Zambia is 70 by 70. Yeah. <laughs> I got it in 2012. So from the sales of the broiler chicken that I did, I managed to get that car and I managed to get this piece of land. That was in 2012. Then after that, I, I paused a bit in 2014. After getting a piece of land, this one, and my vehicle, I paused for me to concentrate for my ziari at that time. I needed my full attention. You know how that school is, so I needed to, I needed to put in my best. And then I just built that particular shelter for the worker at the farm. Uh, I built also that from that the 1,000 chickens. I built that small shelter for the worker who could be here and to prevent encroachment. You know how land in Lusaka is. If it's bare, others would think it's unoccupied, so I needed someone to stay here. 2012 is nine years ago. Samford managed to get a 70 by 70 piece of land, buy a vehicle, and took himself to law school. All this out of the 1,000 broiler chickens? So 2012 broilers were featuring, I think it was around between 45 and 50 crutch at that time. Yes, between 45 and 50 crutch at that time. I, did, I started with 300, I did a number of 300, then a 400, then I did a 500, then I did the 1,000 ones, yes, and then I went to school. And from the sales, then I had to buy those things I mentioned that I needed to, yeah. While I was doing my ziadi, I also, in 2016, I began uh, getting back to the organic chicken farming, the free range. Yeah, so that's the time I got, I think I had about, I started with 30, I bought them from, from Pemba. So I bought 30 from there, brought them here, raised them, and then began picking eggs. By that time, they used to, to lay and incubate themselves. I was using the natural method. Yes. Then when I got married in 2016, I, we ate all of them at the wedding. <laughs> Sold a few. And then uh, this current one, we started in 2020. And so in 2020, we started with, um, we bought, we, have, we bought 500 day olds. Yeah, we bought 500 day olds. We raised them. And then um, we had a number of cocks out of that 500, which about 150. And then we had a mortality, so the natural death of chickens. And then, um, so the total that grew to a breeding stock was about 280 hens. And then the ratio is supposed to be 1 to 10 uh, hens. So we had about 30 cocks. And then about 2 died to natural mortality, at least just losing them to death. And so currently we are sitting at um, about 26 cocks and about 280 hens. Yes. On a special day in 2016, Samford got married to Idol Lungomwinde and ironically, the Tonga wedding menu had more chicken than beef. Well, so says Samford. But is it so for Ida? Uh, when I met him, he, he, at that point, he, he just completed his degree and uh, so he was waiting to go into Ziale. But then he, I found him doing uh, farming already. He was keeping broilers at that time. Yeah, he used to keep about a thousand broilers just to come up with some uh, funds for his school. Yes, so he's been doing that. He's been farming from the time I met him. There were villa chickens at the farm. And so those chickens were very special. They had to feature on our wedding. Yeah, so that's how we, we killed them, yes. And then we restarted years later, uh, to, uh, and, and that's how the, the, the idea of keeping village chickens came in a few years after our marriage and we forgot about the broilers and focused on the, on the village chickens. As the saying goes, behind a successful man is a woman and Ida is such a woman who has had to develop passion for keeping chickens over time to support the vision of her husband. In fact, uh, I, I, I never had this interest 
but I I saw to, I, I saw my partner really passionate about this whole thing, and so as a wife, I I thought I I could join him. So I got initiated because of the passion that he has in this whole thing. So it's a thing that I just came to know about it when we were to I mean when the time we were knowing each other. Yeah, not not to say I I I. I, I got attracted to his farming. No, no, no. Of course, it's one of those things. He's just one person who is determined and he, he has so many dreams. So farming was just part of it. Now that it has been confirmed that some special chickens featured at the wedding and that you have the support of your spouse, would you then explain how you grow the chickens to age of maturity, which is either for consumption or indeed for reproducing? So when we when we pick up the, the eggs from here, take them to the to an incubator at home. So from day from a day old chick to um, the time they can lay eggs or to the time they can be consumed by uh, if I sold at the market it's about five to six months. So at six months at least you're able to sell for consumption or they're able to start giving you eggs. So at the age of six, between six and seven, they are able to start giving you the eggs now. They are able to pick eggs from, from, from that age. It also depends on the, the way you are feeding them. So from the, the time they are one week old, your, your feeding, your vaccinations, your treatments, we also determine how they, at what age they will start giving you the eggs. It's like the layers. So most, most farmers would prefer they raise their own layers from day old. Or in my case, I would want to raise my own village chicken breeds because I want them to start giving me eggs at a certain age. So I'll feed them properly from day one. I'll vaccinate them on time. I'll keep the record properly. Like that, you won't blame anyone to say maybe the way they raised them or the way the incubator was, uh, they were mixing turkey eggs, guinea fowl eggs, all the types of eggs. So you find that some eggs that are maybe brought by other people, they, were, they have Newcastle. So they infect your eggs as well. So you find that your chickens, you have high mortality, you have a, a slower rate of laying eggs and all that. So the independence of a farmer to do their things on their own without depending on others is key to at what point you start yielding a result. Yeah, at the moment we are doing the whole process by ourselves. At least we are able to pick up our own eggs take them to our own incubator, pick up our own day olds, do the mixtures, grow them to consumption on A and B to uh, re recapitalizing the, the breeding stock. So we choose. So the, what we are doing now, we are trying to build capacity so that we, so this current breeding stock can go up to two years. So after two years, I have to sell everything. So by the time the two years, these have reached two years, I should have the new stock that I put in to begin giving me the number of eggs. But because by the time they reach one year, eight to two years, it means that the number of eggs they'll be laying will be less. Instead of giving an egg per day or two eggs per day, they start giving you one egg after three days, so you don't need those chickens. It means you have to sell them for consumption. Um, and so it means that as I raise them, I want to put them in categories. So I know that um, the, the pottery A and pottery B are strictly for consumption. Then pottery C is where the breeding stock is. So all the chickens in pottery A and B have to go then the patricity is strictly for for consumption. So that is the staging that I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to develop into. Uh, currently we have um, we have three potteries. Yes, and we are working on, um, we are going to start constructing the, the potteries that can house, the next one is a 3,000 one, then the other one is a 5,000 one. So we want to do three plus five, that's about 8,000 with an L shape. In the first place, I would want to swap the two. I want my law to be part-time, my chicken to be food. 
<laughs> yeah, I'd want to swap them in two, three years from now. I'd want to swap them. So that my chicken, my farming will become my daily business. Then my law practice will become my second. So I only go to the office or to court when I know I have to go to court. I don't want to sit in an office, sit in an office the whole day and receive calls, write letters and do all that. So it's my choice to to swap the two. Um, the realization is that the farming, as a country, farming is going to, a few years from now, farming is going to be giving a lot of money to people. So it depends on what you want to concentrate on as a main business or as a buy the way thing. If you put in all your heart and want to do it as a main business, even people who do, um, who just grow cabbage, and as a main business, they, they make so much money that you'd be shocked. They don't want, they don't need to go to the office and, and work for a 5,000 at the end of the month. So um, that's one of the plans we're trying to do. Uh, in farming, to also answer a part of your question is that you need a lot of patience. Um, you need a lot of investment. Sometimes it's not as easy as someone says, no, do farming. Uh, go back to the land. It's easy to say that. But there's a lot of initial capital that you have to pump in. At least by the grace of God, because of my profession and my type of work, I'm able to get some few coins here and there and be able to pump into a farming business that is not yet giving me the income that I need. So you find that I have to pay my workers from my salary, I have to buy the feed from my income, uh, from my practice and all that. But ideally, the farm itself must be able to pay the workers, must be able to, to buy the feed, must be able to buy the medication, must be able to, to hire a vet doctor who comes maybe once a week. So that patience aspect is what differentiates between a successive farmer and one who will give up easily. I'll give you an example. In 2014, 2016, the time after the other one I told you that I did the chickens I ate, I had a number of chickens, about 100 of them. So I discovered I used to lose them to theft. So like people could steal and then others could die. So I didn't, my stock taking wasn't good. So I had to stop. So that I can come up with a new strategy where I'm able to, to account. So my workers know at the farm that every month we count the chickens. So even when there'll be 5,000, We'll have two days of counting all of them and then my workers would sign against the number of chickens so this month we have counted there are 280 and there are so many cocks so we'll sign against that and then the supervisor will also sign i also check the stock if there's a shortage they know that they'll have to account for that shortage so if i lose five chickens so i'll tell them that one chicken is 150 it means that they have to share the loss between themselves so like that they are very careful, they are, they are not going to, they will make sure that they, there is no chicken that is lost. If it dies, I have to find it. So if they tell me a chicken has died, I will tell them, okay, I will come, I will need to find it. So I will have to find it, then I will dispose it off. It means that they can't kill to eat. So with that, it requires proper management and also proper training. You have to go to these seminars where they teach on broiler, really, or chicken poultry farming. You learn how to vaccinate, you learn how to just to do all those things. So to reduce on the cost of bringing in a vet every time you want to, to vaccinate them. For instance, I now know how to inject goats for, for vaccination and deworming. So I had to train that. And then I have to train all my workers to take them for that particular training. So you pay for them, they train. And then like that you, you lower the cost of, um, of growing and then you have more profit. You can say so. Um, at this particular um, Shantumbo farm, we want to concentrate on chickens. But we have a number of goats as well at this particular uh, place uh, as the, the breeding stock. They're sitting at, uh, at about 50, 56 goats uh, and about 26 sheep. Um, I, I discovered that goats, with a good plan for goat farming, 
you you get about if you buy the gods that give you twins like at every birth gods will give you three births in a year so you're going to get about six gods in a year from one shigo and um, at the moment gods are fetching between 800 if it's a good breed you can get between six and eight hundred if you go to the border towns you get maybe eight hundred a plus minus transport you get a profit of about 900 so uh, it's a it's an aspect of trying to to create diversity you have chickens you have goats you have sheep and create at least a number of incomes when our friends finish their um, their month of Ramadan there's good business when <laughs> when when that month is done so it means that if you have 200 goats and you just see one of them it can connect you to sell all the like i have i have the muslim friends uh, who you just call him and say oh when is your ramadan or the other month of their fasting is done and tell him you have 200 you get all the 200 at a go so it means that you can you can also make some good income out of it and and keep on expanding yeah I'm not really particularly very unique from, from the others, but it's uh, maybe the fear of poverty <laughs> and the fear that um, the, the suit and tie and also working for someone. You know, sometimes you, a company can go down, they can close it, or sometimes your boss can be in a bad mood and fire you. And um, also just working for people up to the age of 50 by the time you reach 50 or 55 the retirement age or 65 the option you discover that you'll have lost um you'll have lost strength to 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 farm um i chose farming because i've discovered that when you watch our friends uh, in Kenya or Uganda, you discover that there are a lot of youths who are actually extremely doing fine from farming. Professional youths, accountants, doctors, lawyers, journalists, um, and all that. So they just take farming as a serious business, invest in it, train your workers, so that at least even when you're doing the suit and tie, and aim at retiring at a certain young age, then you'll be able to, to make an income out of it. There's good income out of farming. And the taxes that are there, mostly like our government may have the tax system that is favoring the farmers. And because of that, you discover that you make more yield out of it. Um, I'll give you an example that the times when I go to showgrounds, a livestock center to buy medications and all that stuff, you find there are a lot of old people and few young people. So I'm among the few young people that would and other young people that we now find, at least it's, it's encouraging to find a number of them who are doing animal husbandry, they are doing pottery, they are doing goat farming, others are doing dog farming and, and, and all types of farming. And um, we discuss and, 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 and hear each other's challenges. You find other farmers who are coming from Serenje down and they come to Lusaka and you discover that the car they came with to Lusaka to get medication is probably a, a land cruiser and that's a new vehicle that costs more than 1.5 million and they get all that income from farming so the discovery is that farming fetches very good amount of income. but all we need to do is to be patient to concentrate to be serious in it and to to keep on pumping until you reach at an age that you can now harness an income out of it. As a young farmer, Sanford's plea to line ministries such as the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, and the small medium enterprises is to synergize programs and policies that promote and empower farming among youths. My plea would be that, particularly what comes to my mind um, are four ministries, I think. The first one is Ministry of Lands. Uh, the Ministry of Lands uh, must have a policy that makes it easy for young people to, to access pieces of land for farming. Um, currently, I think it's, it's, it's challenging for young people to, to be able to access land, uh, titled land, uh, 
uh, or small holding land to do farming. Uh, if, if they do proper land audits and discover that probably there are many elderly people who have so many pieces of land uh, because they, they, they could have easy access to it, uh, that audit would help, would create a system to show that the, the young people who don't have pieces of land but they are able to pay 4,000 kwachas and offer fee. They can raise that money and then at least they are able to access land. So access to land, affordable land and titled land is, is very important. And number two um, is the creation of the new ministry of small and medium enterprise is a good thing. And the, the alignment of the CEC to it is also a very good thing. It means that the young people who are interested in all forms of business, especially farming because that's my interest, can have access to cheaper loans that have low interest rates. And also the, the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprises maybe should be having workshops where they teach young people how to do project writing or project proposals for free. Just have a weekend or a day where they are taught how to write projects, or different projects, and free training. And then the other one that comes to mind is um, Ministry of Agriculture, which can also uh, work hand in hand to see how value addition can be done. Now, if, for instance, you're doing tomatoes as a farmer, it means that value addition, if Ministry of Agriculture can, can also train the young people of interest to, to grow tomatoes and not just sell them like that, but make tomato sauce into small sachets or the bigger ones like that. Then it means that they're going to employ more people and make more money. Um, the other one that comes in mind is Ministry of Livestock and, and Fisheries. Uh, if, for instance, I'll give you an example of the, the students that train at NRGC or at Monze Agriculture Institute and other institutions where they train. If those who are not interested to go into formal employment but they want to start farming as a business, the government is able to invest in them. They can do private public partnership with them and do some serious farming and they get because they already have the training all they need is a funding and they need also a supervisor that makes sure that the investment is not wasted into consumption so if you get a loan for farming you don't need to buy a bmw you must invest it in farming and wait to get that car that you have always admired after you make a certain level of profit we have four employees at the moment uh, three and one supervisor Ine ni ne question mwende inkara kwa mene kuno kushantumbu. Mwanga mwe mwa onera pano pa famu, dine supervisor, hapa famu hii. Pia tinayamba famu hii, tunayamba na nkuku. Tienzo, tunasunga nkuku. Kuku sisi zenze chezi ngondo za mene tunayamba nazo pano pa famu. So, mwenda ma daisy, ti nkuku zienda, jista buwanji, zienda zibara na zipaka pangwano pangwano. After that, people are now on a boat. 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 People are At the end of the day, we are now on a boat. We are now on a boat. We are now on a boat. We are Kambo, zisunga na zevi. Moe enda madezi, zayambo bara na mbelele zija. Zienda zipaka. Na zumbuzi, zienda zipaka. Mwanga panopee ni kambira, mbele za mene zitri nazo. Ziri 20. Mbuzi, ziri 42. Za mene tiri nazo panopafamu. Mkuku, nazo mkuku za mene tiri nazo by this time. Zikuwa na 500. But tunaya mba chene na nkuku zingono almost 10 so. No. Wabosi. Okay. Time ili yonzi. 
boss or on Dima, Marimbo and Chito. Afunica John Chito, as this event is according to Mufuni. Got Tipari problem, Miriko, Funico, a pedicari report, put your boss back. But you are told to farm, problem, Miriko, near so so. Oh, cook with it, yaso yaf. Chedi so, Chifunica farm, managing at you want you to encourage Zipa farm. Eh, but boss, like a boy, I want among a boss, very bueno. Chifu was out. Baka Bueda, day on say a man of Bueda, a peza, the intervolu and a perform. But report is not a bunch is on our pass. A poor banga kai. Monga boss out to my body. Awe, boss and your hip. Kai information in your set to my pedica with your boss. So, Baman Carabazi or Sibaripo or Varip, one carabazi or two, Chasoku farm which are missing. Oh, probably also Eriko farm, more especially Monga in on Tower Amenity. Dear time, Mugamba Kupi and Cook and dear Pesima for Manning. So I can time too much treatment. To go on a time we are got to a boss made too funny by the mind over boss. But no time paper figure of Funicamuara was so so so. But it bagura muquara by it. Chamachi Funica said you could put him in our boss. Often you can visit very much a muddy perform, and that was him will perform one guy's. This means we have a boss. Chili chance to manage a funica, to funico a pericular report. Then we have a zero to Chamachi Funica perform in Chasso by it. Chance to take a camber. But the banji ba treat it akono farm as a result za pega the vindu vose vienda chebu and when Samford was asked if he would be willing to offer pro bono legal services to youths wanting to venture in entrepreneurship his response was any time but only with guidance from the law association of zambia I mean, anytime we can do that on phone <laughs> or on in the office but of course We'll have to get permission from Lars to be able to, <laughs> to give advice for free. But like I said, there will be few legal advice that would come in that aspect. It will just be compliance with um, incorporation of companies uh, or business names uh, or creation of trademarks for branding, for instance, and some small, small, small patches. Because it means that if you, you're going to, to have tomato business, or you're going to do dry meat, for instance. You need it, and you want to name it Condwe Land or Condwe, Condwe Meats. You need to go to Pakran and create a trademark for that. So that if someone else is going to be called Condwe Meats, you're able to take a legal action against them and say, no, 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 but you can't do it, this is mine. And I'm licensed to practice or to trade under this name. In their appeals, Ida forewarns other married women not to be comfortable with their partner's monthly paying incomes, for they are not guaranteed. And Deborah, on the other hand, encourages other women to start business for selling free-range chickens, as it is a profitable venture. Well, I would say to my fellow women out there, mar married women, uh, I would advise them not to be too comfortable with with their jobs or with their husband's jobs because these are not permanent. Our jobs may not be permanent, but if we invest in such areas, at least our children are assured to a better life. So not to get so comfortable with the, the, the monies that you have at that moment, but think of the future. What happens if, if, if your husband dies? What happens if, if he never left anything for you? But if, uh, if uh, like I am, of course, God forbid, if my husband so happens that he, he dies, at least we have something to point at, at least my children have something to, to look at. So women should be encouraged because these are good things and you never go wrong with farming. Now, <coughs> in business, in business, I have a lot of I have a lot of money. I have a lot why am I going the next day or perhaps one week? I'm going to fit all the things. Hmm. Could you manage my body plan? Jump. I'm sorry, I'm going to convey all this. I'm going to go to Angu. Could you know? I'm going to go to Angu. Kunda ba. I'm going to say I'm going to start buying all the powder. Want to start buying all the food? I'm going to start buying all the food. 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 The message I can share to people that are young, or the youth in short, uh, is that relying on a salary 
or monthly income. Sometimes it could be challenging because there are, there, are in, 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 there, are, there are things that just come and planned for. So if you, in, if you venture into doing some other activity which will bring income at the end of the month, it's a good idea. Yes, you cannot go wrong by doing that. Because I've seen from what Council Sanford Mind has done, he was even able to balance up. So my call is that if you've got an opportunity to meet such a person, you can learn more. You can learn more, and even, even the best person to advise how to go about it until you reach at the level where you've got a, a, a very huge or a fruitful kind of arrangement. The last thing I'd say is to encourage um, young people, ladies and gentlemen, to, to take a lot of interest in agriculture, uh, attend seminars. Mm. Even if you have no capital, just begin developing interest for it. Yeah, and uh, if you have a piece of land for your mother, for your parents, and they, whether it's in the village or somewhere nearby, just buy a goat or buy two or four of them. Let's see how that grows. You may, even if you are a tie and, and jacket uh, type of, um, of a person, from that small anchor, you're going to develop interest. Because you see that from the number of goats you'll have bought, give you an income. Then you'll be, from there you start developing the interest. And two, we have a thousand young people in this country who are doing fun. And like that, who stop importing cabbages, tomatoes and onions from countries like South Africa, Zimbabwe, and other countries that are doing extremely fun. It means that we'll satisfy our own market, we'll make our own money, and even improve our own GDP and not rely on copper as the only um, uh, economical uh, aspect that we can rely on GDP on. But there's a misnomer here, Luigi. Perception that young people cannot be successful farmers. They can be. Let me abuse my children. My children are ranchers. They are young. We taught them the art. They are ranchers in their own right. They sell steers to me. The dad. I pay them. They can actually pay their own school fees where they are now. Back to the subject I had. Why should they queue for a bus? They can pay their own school, school fees. Because it's a culture we were brought up with, and I'm a beneficiary of that culture. Maybe that's why I'm a rancher. At best, your parents give you a heifer, a female animal. If you know how to nurse it, it works for you. So young people should consider taking farming as a business, and we should support them. And I'm saying that land is essential to be a farmer, depending on where you are. The culture you were brought up in, you can be a rancher, you can keep goats, you can keep sheep, you can keep pigs, you can keep chicken. You can also start farming fish. If you are from Lopula, the water bodies allow you to do that. Western province, the water bodies allow you to do that. You can farm fish successfully. Agriculture seemingly is the way to go and the market is readily available, more so that the Congolese are now our friends, as Bali said. We hope that this documentary of Council, Farmer Sanford Mwinde, has motivated you to work hard towards your dreams in creating more income streams, as a salary is not guaranteed. Remember to give us your feedback. You can email us at documentaries at damontvzambia.com. From me, Francesca and my crew, thank you for watching. Stay blessed.